I'd like to start by um, describing briefly um, the repertoire of proposed um, in this DVD. So the starting position, of course, is uh, the Rai Lopez and Black plays F5. Um, now, in this position, um, White has a number of minor alternatives. Um, so E takes F5 is one move which is sometimes tried. Queen E2 is another move. Um, Bishop takes C6. None of these are especially problematic, but they crop up from time to time, and it's worth uh, having a brief look at them. Um, it, I won't outline what I propose against them here because uh, they're all quite rare. Um, D4 is an important line to know. Um, it doesn't arise all that often, um, but it's extremely tricky. Um, after F takes E4, Knight takes E5, Knight takes E5, D takes E5, Black's best move is C6. Um, this bishop can't move because then Queen A5 check would uh, fork the king and the E5 pawn. But White's idea is to actually sacrifice that bishop with Knight C3. C takes B5 and Knight takes E4. Um, this is a very sharp gambit variation. Um, Black's best response is D5 takes a Knight F6, which leads to a position uh, in which objectively Black is absolutely fine. But it's uh, worth uh, looking at the clip uh, dedicated to D4, maybe more than once, um, simply to make sure that you understand the main ideas because this is a variation in which it's quite possible to lose quite quickly with black. Um, one of the main attractions of f5 is that because it's so forcing, um, there really aren't all that many reasonable moves for white um, in this position. Um, d3 is one of the two main lines. Um, it's one which has become increasingly uh, popular uh, over the years. Um, it's also a very serious try for an opening advantage, even though it looks slightly passive. Um, black basically has to take that pawn, takes knight f6, and castles. I've covered white's early deviations as well, but this position is the normal one, and here black has a principal choice. Um, this is one of the things, incidentally, although I haven't covered it on the DVD, but this is one of the things which I like about the, uh, the Yanish is that um, in the in the main lines, black has a choice of more than one option. So um, d6 is a very playable move here, which has been played by a number of strong players. But um, for this DVD, I've tried to uh, discuss bishop c5 in quite a lot of detail, and uh, I, I'm pretty pleased with uh, the results. Bishop c5 um, is a very aggressive attacking move. The idea is uh, having played d6 to keep this bishop on a very strong diagonal. And um, I've had to do a lot of work here to convince myself that black's position is um, fully playable. Um, the most important variations after bishop c5 are bishop takes c6 and knight takes e5. That does win a pawn, but um, it's not all doom and gloom for black, as I hope to demonstrate in the notes. Um, queen d3 is another important option. Um, d6, queen c4. d6 is necessary in order to safeguard the bishop on c5, so please don't castle in this position because you will lose a piece. So instead, d6, queen c4, queen e7, and here the principal variation is uh, knight c3, bishop d7, knight d5, um, which leads to uh, to complicated play after takes, takes, knight d4, bishop takes, queen takes, and now either the relatively quiet knight takes d4 or the much more exciting um, knight takes e5. Uh, they're both covered in quite a lot of detail, and um, I think black can be happy with his chances there. Um, Apart from these lines, um, you'll also see I've devoted some coverage to knight c3, uh, d6, and in particular uh, bishop g5, which was uh, the recent choice of uh, Neji, who's a very strong Indian theoretician, played board one for India in the Tromso Olympiad. Um, and we'll see how uh, a leading uh, Yanish specialist got on against that variation. 
in the clips. Um, knight c3 is the traditional main line of uh, the Yanish um, developing another piece and protecting the pawn. Um, Black's traditional response was to take, take and play uh, d5, which uh, leads to very interesting, very complex positions, which I haven't discussed at all, because um, my suggestion here is to play knight f6, which is kind of the modern uh, trend in this position. Um, knight f6 leads to uh, two major uh, and fundamentally different types of position. Um, white can take on f6 when g takes f6 really isn't very good. Uh, white's going to follow up with d4 and uh, black's in a certain amount of danger of not getting out of the opening. So uh, queen takes f6 is uh, better. Um, here I've looked at castles, which is a sideline, but the main line here is queen e2 attacking this pawn. It can't be conveniently defended because the king is sitting behind it. So d6 or something is uh, not going to be good after d4. But black's entire idea is to play bishop e7, which is a pawn sacrifice. And after bishop takes c6, um, previously the main line was d takes c6 um, when black would castle kingside, play bishop f5, uh, rook a8 and try to make a draw. Um, I don't think that there's anything necessarily that wrong with that, but b takes c6 is the new trend. Uh, this has been pioneered by Rajabov, who um, has played it, uh, for instance, extremely convincingly against Karyakin, as Via Gintsev, who also plays a lot of uh, very good games in the Yanish, has also specialized in this move. And uh, I've gone into this position in a lot of detail. Um, queen takes e5 isn't that serious an idea here, but it is covered. Um, d4 is a dangerous sideline. Um, that's covered. The main line here is knight takes e5, and black needs to know what he's doing here, and what he's doing is queen e6. Um, when I've looked at a number of different approaches for white to try to hang on to this extra pawn, and I think I found fully adequate compensation everywhere. Um, the alternative after knight f6 is queen e2, um, which leads to very complicated play after uh, d5, knight takes f6, g takes f6, and now the main line is d4, bishop g7, uh, d takes e5 in castles with um, extremely complicated play. Um, so overall, um, it's a repertoire where there are a lot of sharp positions. There are definitely a lot of pawn sacrifices for black. Um, you tend to be a pawn down in quite a few of these variations, but um, black's compensation for that pawn tends to be quite strong. It takes on different contours sometimes, but frequently he plays with the two bishops, and frequently he plays with half-open files on the king side and very dynamic uh, play so um i have to admit uh looking at uh looking at the lines and looking at the analysis um i really think that uh this this entire opening is extremely strong as i've mentioned um in the two main lines namely d3 and knight c3 and um, black has alternative main lines to the ones which i've looked at um, which you can analyze if if there turns out to be a problem with one of these lines. But for the moment, I really can't see a clear route for a wide or to a wide advantage in any of these variations.